So those are some of the pictures that we have a ton more. I know that you guys seen them on Facebook as well. Uh, those that are on Facebook. And it was just sweet to be able to communicate with the church that easy. It almost seemed like, you know, you guys were with us and we were with you. And, you know, we didn't have too much. Even though we had distance between us, uh, we were still together in spirit and in the Lord. So um, I think those updates are awesome. So yes. the updates that went out, Kelly yes. and... And Brian put together a sending out to the church family as they... Uh, those were great. We yeah. felt like we were with you yeah. when we got those. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's something that's very sweet and near and dear to our hearts. Because, look, there's this mission team that Calvary Chapel sends. They're like, get out of here. You got to go, you know. But then uh, there's this whole other team that's here. Yeah. And uh, it, it's involved in prayer. And it's involved in giving. And it's involved in in uh, supplying and, and this team goes along with this other team that 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 one team stays and one team goes and uh, just in 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 the matter of going you know you always have these things that you might run into could run into maybe some fears that you have but um, God meant every single one of them every single one of them in prayer and I I got back and I told Pastor Paul, we should ask the Lord for more stuff, man. <laughs> you know, because we were answering all our prayers. Yeah. Even, even to, like, word for word, Lord, it was so sweet to us. It was. Huh. It was, yeah. Everything we asked for, so we were like, we need to ask for more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and there were there. It wasn't like stuff like, Lord, give me a better home. Lord, give me no, a no, car. No. There were spiritual things yes. that had meaning. And God was like, right on. Yes. Okay. You know, and, and we were just walking in the spirit, just totally led by the Lord. But um, that 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 was answer to prayer. So this team that that stayed here was fully involved with sending a team to Alamos. You know, so um, uh, uh, we want to thank you from uh, from the mission team because it, it's it's possible that way you know when you get a group of people that's listening to the lord and saying god what do you want us to do how would you want us to step out and hearing the holy spirit and then having a a, a church family come together and say well this is what the lord's saying let's do it all right you know, let's get in a band and you know <laughs> and we just go as the lord sends us who will go send us lord you know so um that's where uh, we want to start. We want to start with an update from Alamos. So even as we're we're here, let's just pray right now, and let's give this time over to the Lord as um, we'll hear some of the testimonies. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, we just come before you, Lord. We thank you so much for this evening, Lord, that you've made it all about um, you, that you've made it all about missions, Lord. Because Father, you're doing a work, and uh, thank you for your Son Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to hear where you want us to go. And we want to be led by your Holy Spirit. We want to be a church family that hears your voice and answers the callings and says, we'll go. Send, uh, send, send, send me, Lord. So, Father, we want to be uh, just inclined into your voice and asking you, Lord, how you, you could even use us. But, Lord, you do, and we thank you for it, Lord. And we ask right now that you would just set apart this time, Lord, as we hear uh, the testimonies of uh, the saints and, uh, and, and what you want to do in, uh, in, with missions, Lord. So we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We lift it up to you. May it all be about you. May you receive all the glory and praise. And uh, we just, uh, Lord, just set this time apart for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, I'm not going to say who wants to talk because I'll call on you because <laughs> everybody gets shy. But um, I just want to call on those that went and asked, you know, how the Lord spoke to you there, maybe in some way, uh, had something personal between you and him, or how the Lord might have used you there, or, um, or uh, how the Lord would encourage you to maybe encourage someone else to go. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> I will call on Andrew. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> up there? Yeah. Sure. Come on up here. Come on. Then. We got to pay the 
It was pretty cool. Um, basically, the way the Lord spoke to me was it wasn't about me. It wasn't at all about me. It was about Him. Because there were certain things, certain aspects. You know, when you go on a mission trip, you want to do certain things. You want certain things to run certain ways. And when you give it over to the Lord, He directs your steps. And that's what he did, because I was like, mm, we should do it like this. No, the Lord was like, no, you're going to do it like this. <laughs> uh, the thing that really struck me the most, and it was cool because uh, Pastor Eileen asked us on the way home, you know, when we were in, in I think it was in Arizona, he asked everybody in the van, everybody that went, how the Lord spoke to you. And the, the, what really hit me was the family, the family of believers, mm -hmm. and how you can go to Mexico in, in, a, in a third world country and meet up with a bunch of believers who you've never met because we met with some people from Minnesota, from Arizona, from Texas, and it was like we were all one family. I mean, we just started connect. We connected. I'm getting goosebumps now just talking about it because it, we're in the family of the Lord and we're all about his business. You know, we're all there to serve the living God. And as we come together, lit, serving him, it was it was way cool yeah. because you know it was like it wasn't like we were meeting them for the first time. It's like we had known them, or we do know them, and we will see them again when we go to heaven, either here or there. We'll see them again. Yeah. Right. So that was really cool. That's really cool. And and the other thing was just how we all came together in in, in one accord. It, it was just a blessing. I mean. I forgot who it was. I don't know if it was Linda or Ruth, but how the different personalities, I think it was Ruth. I think it was Ruth. She said the different personalities, how normally in, in a worldly situation would clash, but how the strengths and the weaknesses of the, the different personalities came together and just, yeah. just united and, and worked together for the Lord. It was just truly an awesome blessing. And this isn't the second time I've been. And I tell you what, this time was even more blessed than the first time, and it was just awesome. Amen. So praise all praise go to, to him. Yeah. Amen. 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 So if you haven't gone, go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Amen. How about you, Mary? <clears throat> <clears throat> I have to stand in front of everybody again. I'll have to get used to this. Yes. Um, it was a really awesome, awesome experience. Um, a group of all different people as one, and for the Lord. Um, it's funny that Andrew touched on their different personalities, and. It was just beautiful. Something that I really noticed is the, the, the cultural difference between the people of Mexico and the people and, and us. They are so warm and welcoming and gracious. When we got there, they were having a baby shower at the ranch and um, the people were starting to leave and we were just pulling up and we were all tired from the road. and. They were, the ladies were coming out and kissing us on the ah. cheek and hugging us and it was just so warm and welcoming. We don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, we, I mean, we're like, hey, yeah. or, you know, we, we just don't, we don't, and it's such, it's, yeah. they've got it right. right. I mean, they make it easy to approach them because of the way their, their culture is and I really like yeah. that. And even um, when we first met some of the people from Minnesota, we were making breakfast in the kitchen and they had come in they got in like at midnight the night before and and they came in and they were speaking with Anna and they didn't say anything to us but we were making breakfast I heard English and I'm like oh and then they left and I thought wow that's different and so we went and and greeted them after we finished breakfast we went out and um, and introduced ourselves and talked to them and broke the ice. But I was just like, wow, that's really yeah. how we are, yeah. but let's not do that. So, Amen. Amen. <laughs> but it was really neat um, seeing the people that we met last year, like Anna's mother um, and uh, several of the people from last year. It was really neat to 
reconnect with them. Um, it was just really a blessing and um, an honor to to go, and uh, we look forward to going again. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, I think, like Mary was talking about, um, the thing that really stood out to all of us, and we were talking about it even in the Bible studies, was, was how welcoming um, the culture is. And for me, as a massage therapist, touch is what I do. And so um, I've been teaching my students for years and years how unhealthy we are in America because we don't do those things. So to then walk into a culture where hugging and kissing on the cheek is normal, is part of, um, it was just such an affirmation for everything that I've been teaching. And as we walked through um, each experience, it just felt like um, God was affirming so many of the um, blessings, the giftings, and the talents that he's asked me to share with people. And so, um, <laughs> um, one of the things that he put on my heart right after he put on my heart to go, I had a really um, unique dream, which is not very normal for me to have sort of a visionary kind of dream I felt it was very strong um, to do foot washing and you know as a massage therapist it's kind of what we do in the spa environment yeah. but it's not something that I've always done in some of the um, church environments and so I was like really you sure about this and so I actually dreamed the same dream the next night oh, and gosh. so I was like okay <laughs> guess this is something that um, that he has called me to do and walking into that environment and um, first of all just going to our leadership and saying hey I think I need to wash people's feet was kind of challenging for me um, because that's not normally I'm very much a, a service oriented follower in that regard so to go to Helene and say you know I've had this dream and I think God wants me to wash people's feet and I'm going to bring all this stuff <laughs> and, you know the looks I'm like okay God you're just going to have to do this because it feels very off but I knew it was what he had told me to do so um, then I talked with Mary and I talked with Abby and it was like okay I'm going to do what? <laughs> But sitting there, washing these women's feet in one of the Bible studies, and so when we first got there, I talked to Anna, and I said, you know, I'm a massage therapist, and um, I use the oils, and immediately, she's going to university to get her degree in nutrition, and there was this immediate connection, and it was just like God, you know, kind of putting his hand on my shoulder and saying, yeah, I told you. I told you that this is what I want you to do. Um, and so the opportunity, the two things that struck me, the first time that I was in the Bible study and started doing some um, laying on of hands, some massage for some of the ladies that Anna had asked me to do that for, um, initially I stood behind Anna's mom's back because Anna said to me, um, you know, I don't know how many of these women will actually let you do this because they are, they take care of everyone else and they don't oh, allow sorry. themselves to be taken care of in this way. Yeah. So be praying with each one for the next one that yeah. they'll let you do this. So I, I started with Anna's mom and was behind her back and kind of rubbing her shoulders and her neck and her head. And I just felt this impetus to sit down in front of her and work on her hands. And I thought, really? It's cement, mm -hmm. it's kind of dirty. Okay, so my flesh said, I don't want to. And <coughs> the spirit said, sit down and do this. And so I sat down and did it <coughs> in front of Anna's mom. And Anna kind of directed me to the next woman. She was doing the Bible study in Spanish. and. Um, so as I would finish up with someone, I'd make eye contact with her, and she'd tell me what lady to go to next. And um, she had told me this next woman probably will just shoo you off. 
So be praying, be praying. And so being in that seated position, sitting in front of her, and just reaching out my hands and saying, por favor. She just handed me her hands. I think because it wasn't um, confrontational or uncomfortable, it was just hand me your hands. <laughs> and so it was really, I really felt God's leading. And then as I worked on each of these women's hands and they were the elders of the group, God just kept putting on my heart, what have these hands done? for their families, for the work of God, for their whole lives. Everything that they've done has been reaching out with these hands. So that was just an incredible experience for me. I was praying as I was working on them and it was really beautiful. And then when we did the foot washing, it was, we got through one round of washing these ladies' feet and then they were quite sure that um, we were done and they were going to wash each other's feet. So it was so beautiful, cool. you know, right after the week of Passover and resurrection, when Jesus washed his disciples' yes. feet, Anna was able to teach on that particular scripture while we were washing their feet. Oh. And I think it just, the Holy Spirit moved and inspired them to then want to wash each other's feet and then wash all of our feet as well. Wow. So it was such a, such awesome. a blessing. Yeah. And tell yeah. about the lady that was walking. Yeah. Walking. Was she walking. Was oh, walking. Oh, yeah. So in the one that we did the foot washing, um, one of the women, it was kind of, well, it was kind of hot the whole time we were there, but it was particularly warm this afternoon. And um, one of the women got there a little bit later and um, was kind of talking to Anna and t I think telling her what was happening. And of course it's in Spanish, so I only understand a little bit. And um, Anna said to us, oh, she had to walk about 20 minutes, what, about a mile, mile and a half in the heat. And they wear beautiful things when they come to Bible study. They don't wear shorts and t-shirts. She had a long skirt on and a long tailored shirt, long sleeves and closed up. So she was warm. And she said the whole way she had been walking, she had thought how wonderful it would be if somebody massaged her feet. Oh. <laughs> and God provided. <laughs> It's really sweet because as I seen the ladies at at the um, at the ranch, you know, they were teaching each other how to prepare beforehand to go and, and, and do this ministry, and uh, it was something that the Lord put on uh, Kelly's heart, and uh, you know, the Lord used it. You know, anything that we have to offer to the Lord, the Lord says, bring it. You know, I, I can use it. You know, bring bring your gifts, bring your talents, uh, just bring your the sacrifice, you know, your your body is a living sacrifice. So um, that was uh, that was that was really sweet how the Lord used that. I know that we had some trainees, and then the Lord used it. So amen. 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 How about how about you, Abby? Abby Gill. Um, mine the same with uh, Kelly, but my I have I wanted to read these verses because I thought, oh my gosh. Okay, so. Kelly had mentioned, oh, to me at Alamos, oh, I, you know, when we go to women's Bible study, I'm hoping you'll help me wash, maybe you can help me wash the lady's feet. And I thought immediately, <laughs> I, there's no way I can do that, you know? And um, she was like, it's really easy, you know? And she was just explaining to me, and then she says, well, let me wash your feet. And I thought, <laughs> How can she wash my feet? That's, you know, it's not, it's not right. You know. And she, uh, so she brought down our stuff, and she was explaining to me what to do. And as she was washing my feet, I thought, oh my gosh, this lady does not even know me, and she's willing to sit on the floor and touch my feet. It was hot, <laughs> you know, it, you know, and she was willing to do what God had told her to do. So after she did that, wash my feet, um, I washed, I got to wash Mary's feet. And I thought, wow, this is so cool. I get to wash somebody's feet, you know, and just, 
and hopefully bless them or do what God has done. And then in, at the Bible study, Anna was teaching on uh, John 13. And John 13, verse 14 says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. So, as I was blessed to be able to wash Mary's feet, like, totally blessed. And then we went to the Bible study, and even on the way there, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, Lord. I, I just, I don't know, I don't know. And then, um, we got there, and I didn't really realize Anna was teaching on those verses because everything's in Spanish. <laughs> Until I heard something that I was able to understand. And so we washed, I was able to wash. I was so blessed to be able to wash Anna's sister's feet, which I didn't know. And then I was also blessed to be able to wash uh, Vicky's feet, who just had the baby. baby. And her feet were so swollen, and it was... I, and it was really cool to be able to pray for them and just, Lord, bless whatever they they do, where they go, the people that they serve. And then to be able to see them, like Kelly said, turn around and want to wash each other's feet was even sweeter than anything you can ever think. And then and then I thought, somebody, somebody had said, I think Ruth, Ruth had said, because she can speak Spanish, Ruth had said, oh, um, Anna said that one of the most lowest... Um, acts of service you can do was to wash people's, like it was the lowest of low, like Jeannie said, like to us would be washing toilets. Um, <laughs> that's a perfect analogy. So um, I was really blessed to be able to do that. It spoke to me to be able to do what Jesus did, that God allowed me to um, imitate him in a, some way. And then the other thing is, Caitlin was there when we did that, and she would love to have done it, but she didn't. And um, she said what she liked the most is that the ladies did it back to us. I don't know exactly how it speaks to her because she's nine, but I know that it blessed her to be able to realize that, oh my gosh, they wanted to do it back. So that was mm. so my... <clears throat> Like everybody's been saying, it's uh, we're just there for a, <clears throat> a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, and it was more. Um, every time we go on a trip, the Lord puts on a heart, a book to read as we go, and uh, <laughs> it's amazing how God works because uh, the book of Mark, who is Jesus the servant, yeah. and in uh, Mark nine forty nine it says. Uh, whoever or everyone will be seasoned with fire every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt and that to me spoke volumes because it's essentially first the Lord works on you and I know the Lord's working overtime with me and um, it happened even two months before the trip you know the uh, I know thank you all for your prayers and all that because it they were getting mortared over there on the border, over on the, the, everywhere we went. We knew we were getting prayed for. I mean, record times going in the country, 20 minutes coming out. Unheard of. Unheard of. Unheard of. So thank you guys. You guys are the servants. You know, we're just the knuckleheads just saying, go, we're the toilet washers. And everybody should be a toilet washer, whether you're praying, whether you're giving out of the heart, we're going. Right. And uh, what was really hit me was um, actually the travel together. And um, and actually when we were there, there was one brother we were talking to, actually Jerry, whose uh, father's father has been doing this and giving Bibles out by the airplane and all that. But one thing he spoke to us about was uh, being a living sacrifice. And out of Romans, obviously 12, and how we missed the point. 
here a lot. You know, uh, the majority of Christians, they don't consider it a being a living sacrifice. I mean, like, which was everybody alluded to, you know, how often do we get on the feet or down, bow down to others and wash their feet or whatever it is? Or we walk by and somebody will drop a pencil. Do we help pick it up? Uh, just those little things. I know the Lord was bashing my heart in something fierce a couple nights where uh, I was just completely broken. And, uh, and then the Lord just blesses. But I remember driving in the van. Um, and I remember uh, before we even got there one thing that had happened uh, everybody was like a little tense and not really sharing it wasn't until Kelly started sharing and I remember I was sitting in the back I got to be in the back seat which was unheard of for me that, I was having an issue with that in the first place <laughs> <laughs> that was my hang up you know because <laughs> no control I had to sit there you know <laughs> and um <laughs> But I was just praying, and I was like, wow, Lord, how come everybody's like in their own thing, have their headphones on, and, and, or whatever, and then lo and behold, the Holy Spirit just smacked us, mm -hmm. and it was so awesome, because then everybody just lit up the van, and we were just sharing of what the Lord was doing in our lives, mm -hmm. and, and it was amazing, because then it prepped us once we got there, and um, just, just how... Selfish we can be, but in the Lord, when we are weak, He is strong. You know, and how He knits us all together. You know, from and then what was amazing was the last night. There were sixty people in the hangar, something like that, and it was such an awesome service. You know, um, you know, one of Pastor Dan was teaching, but then his beloved wife was was translating. You know, and it was just phenomenal you know and I always love Louise when she worships it's just something that girl can worship you know and it's right from the heart and uh, it, it would just amaze me of how a group of knuckleheads can come together and love the Lord they're there completely like everybody was saying their mentality is not of gathering material goods or what we look at and oh that person has that or that person has that it isn't about that at all. It's who can we serve? And it was one thing that really hit me was we, me, I'll own it, um, seeing that ultralight go up. Everybody's, oh, that would be awesome to ride it. You know, <laughs> you know that thrill, because I love adrenaline, you know, just one of those things, you know. It's like going fast on a bike, you know, or something. <laughs> but he gets down, and everybody was saying, hey, how, how, was that awesome? I remember Dan said, right away, he goes, oh, I'm past that. I just want to. Bibles out. And I was just like, oh, okay, Lord, thank you for that whack. You know? <laughs> but um, that's it, you know? And, and it's interesting that, you know, Mark says to be seasoned with fire, to burn away those rocks, because he's a consuming fire, you know? And then we're to be salt in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, awesome how he molds us and shapes us, takes off those rocks. And yet we could all be together, even you guys here, why we're there, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Because we're one under the name of God, under Jehovah Nissi, who is our banner, you know. And uh, I just thank you guys for allowing me to go with your prayer support and just your your support. And uh, as well as my brothers and sisters, it was just exactly like every time we go, it's who God has. That's amazing. The the team he puts together, yes. you know, and uh, people will say, "Oh yeah, I'm going." They'll be up there, but then, you know, the Lord just starts taking away or adding to, that's right. and then next thing you know, really, Lord, and even in my heart, I'm like, really, Lord, <laughs> you know, and then you get, the, yeah, as you're even traveling, really, Lord, this ain't working, <laughs> but then, then the Lord just molds us all together, you know, and it's because of His grace and His love. So, a lot of the work of unity happens right in that van. It's just a sweet time and fellowship and, and going through the word, singing, yeah. And uh, 
The Lord does a work, and it's really sweet. You can look forward to that because you're going to have fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And uh, the Lord prepares you all the way through. You make preparations here, and then the Lord just allows you to, to you know, walk in His ways there. So, um, Marty, you want to share with me? Picasso! I think that I am totally, my heart is for missions. I totally know it's God's heart. I mean, obviously. It was his, and I've always thought that it's the most important, like, before Jesus left and ascended up into heaven, his last message to us was to go out to is, uh, you know, all those three places, yeah. and, <laughs> and uh, but to go. And that was our message. That's, I mean, and that's, I mean, if you think this is the last time you're going to see somebody, and this is their message, so this is, like, important. It's important that we go. And you may have a mission field in your neighborhood. You may have a mission field, you know, in your workplace. And it doesn't stop. You know, it's like you really, it's wonderful when you're on the mission trip because you're, you're bathed in the word, you're bathed in prayer, and uh, you're on a mission for the Lord. You know, you, but we are, can be on a mission for the Lord every day of our lives. Amen. Because it's, that's like, if we're not going and telling every, I mean, that should be our heartbeat. Yeah. And um, for me, my biggest thing when I go is how that we are, when we go, it's not like necessarily what we're doing or what we bring or anything. It's how we're going to be a relief to the team that's yeah. there. Yeah. Dan and Anna are there 24-7. Yeah. He teaches five, six, seven times a week. He drives two hours to go to a place to teach every week. Every day he's got different places he goes. He, does, he goes to the prison on Mondays he, because he was in jail for five months. And, and the Lord, he saved guards and people. He got favor. He has a prison ministry now in the prison. So, and Anna, she teaches two Bible studies a week. She go, she's also going to add a third Bible study. And she goes to school full time. And she's is part of, those girls are up at 5.30. She's up at 4.30 in the morning reading her Bible. The girls come out around 5.30. I think it is 5.30 and do their devotions and they get their kitchen stuff done because sometimes there's teams there just so things are organized. Everything gets washed every morning. It's a well-oiled machine and it's when we go on a mission trip, it's we're the relief. We're the ones that's coming to what can we do for you? What do you need done? We're the, and we are the help. We're encouraging. We're, God brings encouragement to them by us coming. So he wants to encourage. And then that's the main reason. serving the Lord and we're helping there and uh, Pastor Paul and Pastor Mike say hey you know you guys are going to go and be servants if you see somebody pick up a table you get the other side 
If you see somebody that needs prayer, you go over there and lay hands on them and pray for them. That's your mission. Keep it simple. And see how the Lord uses it. Because then the Lord just does a work in, the, in, in, in that mission field. So um, that's Alamos. And if you like to go, we'll go yearly. You know, as the Lord leads. Amen? Amen. 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 The other thing I wanted to talk about is um, our Ensenada mission trip that's coming up soon. Okay? This one I'll go through pretty quickly. But um, mission uh, Ensenada, it's three hours away. We'll be in a van again, sharing that time together. But there, what they have going on is they're, they're building a, a, a college. And that's their biggest need right now. So a lot of the things that we do is we prepare ahead of time and we'll send a team out there and get that team together. So if you want to sign up, we're going to be going June, uh, Friday, June 28th, and we're going to be coming back on Sunday, June, 20, uh, June 30th, which is a really quick trip. But while we're there, we'll be serving. Same thing, serving and praying as the Lord leads. And uh, a lot of building projects need to happen there where uh, we can just come alongside and maybe build you know, a small uh, little, you know, uh, place for people or missionaries to come and sleep or to start building this college. The vision is big, but God is bigger. And God can do a work. Mm -hmm. And God can do a work through each and every one of us. You know, as the Lord uh, tugs on your heart, pray and ask the Lord, God, is this something that you want me to be part of? This is scary for me. I don't want to. This is not my comfort zone, Lord. This, uh, this is... Like Abby and, 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 and Mary, this, washing somebody's feet, you know, ah, that's not my comfort zone. But then the Lord begins to do a work and allow the Lord to do that. Maybe the Lord will just have you pick up a hammer and, or a brush and paint and whatever the Lord uses is going to bless uh, a team or, or however that would um, go. So who can go? It's open to our youth, especially yeah. it's open to our youth. I want our youth to go. So encourage the youth around you. Say, hey, you want to come along with me? You can you can tag along with me. Come with me. Or individual families. The whole family can go. Abby, uh, Natalie, and Caitlin have gone with me. And we've been a little family together. It's been sweet. So God can use that as well. Because God's teaching you all together as you go. And uh, anyone in the church family, whoever wants to go. I know that uh, this... this uh, Gisela? No. Gisela. 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 Yes. She's going to come. And uh, you go you go to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa? Yeah. Yeah. And she's friends with Kellen, right? Yeah. Co yeah. Co-workers. <laughs> they work together. So she has a desire to go. Isn't that sweet how the Lord will open up missions for Calvary Chapel Life to say, hey, uh, is this a place where you guys send people? Because I want to go. Yes. Can, I, can I go? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This is going to be a place where the Lord wants to use. So I... I don't know. I know the Lord's teaching me, and I know the Lord's teaching us together. But if the Lord's put this desire in people to go, then uh, I want to go along. And if you want to go along, then let's go together. Because uh, this is something the Lord's doing for the future of Calvary Chapel Life. If God's establishing a mission ministry here, then uh, we've gone on many missions. But the Lord also wants us to get our act together. And forms and all these things are, are part of what we're doing. And we're trying to do that a, a better job at that. But at the end of the day, it still leaves it up to the Lord to say, Lord, I want to go. So I'm going to step out by faith and allow the Lord to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 So that's the future of Calvary Chapel Life Mission. These are going to be available in the back. So if you want to go, you fill out the, um, the uh, uh, form. And we're going to have some dates are in the back. Where we'll prepare some mission letters uh, for support. Uh, your passports are going to be needed as well as uh, some other things that we will talk about the culture and sort of get us trained and ready to go. So these, mi th these are our mandatory missions. I know if you can't make one or two, praise God, but we'll, we'll get you informed. You know what I mean? Then we'll have a fundraiser here at the church. So we put these dates down. I hope that we can go with these dates and then, uh, and then we'll see how the Lord will bless us as a team because that's also a uh, team unity building time that we, um, we spend together uh, and hear from each other. So these will be available in the back, and um, I'll have the mission uh, sample letters that you can send for support. Amen. If I could underline a couple of things real yeah. quick on the uh, on this Ensenada trip, it is after school is out. We yes. really want to encourage uh, the high schoolers to go. 
Uh, the other thing, of course, it is very safe there. Yes. Uh, and, and I love it that, uh, you know, we value the teaching and proclaiming of the Word of God so much. And the door that the Lord opened up for us was to help build Calvary Chapel Bible College uh, there in Ensenada. So that just fits so perfectly <coughs> with what we feel our mission is here. Also, Aileen, I was hoping that you'd discuss a little bit about... Uh, if you start thinking about, uh, well, the, the, the green light is God laying it on your heart. Yeah. And then whatever <coughs> there may come, yeah. God will provide. I mean, you've faced that yourself, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, I, I have. And, you know, the Lord puts a desire in your heart, even maybe a little tug. And you say, really, Lord? You know, okay. That's the biggest struggle right there. Once you step out, then the Lord will provide Sometimes there's issues with, oh, well, I don't have the money, you know. The Lord will provide. God has always provided. And, uh, and, and, and those are obstacles. Oh, I need the time off. Well, request the time off. And then see what the Lord will do with it, because then your time off will be denied. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going. Yeah, You'll be all, the people Lord. will be praying to let my people go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. Yes, Helen? Um, so... You switched the date, and it ended up being on the weekend that I work at the hospital. Oh, no. And I, that's what I said, oh, no, now I have to figure out, you know, how I'm going to get that. Change so, so ask Cheryl. And I thought, well, Cheryl likes to work weekends, but everybody's been asking her. She's probably going to say no. So anyway, <laughs> Monday night, I called her up, and um, she said, oh, I'd love to do that. <laughs> And she said, and by the way, if the mission needs, you know, and I was telling her we bring things sometimes. She said, well, if there's anything I could bring, you know, to the mission, I'll be happy to do that. So I'll take her up on that. <laughs> but then I emailed Pastor Helene and told him that um, I got the time off, Pastor, so everything's good. And he says, well, that's great, because on Monday night, my husband was at the men's prayer meeting, and it was probably very close to the time you guys were praying. He said, the brother for prays for you to be able to get the time off. <laughs> and that's when I was calling, was while you guys were very <laughs> awesome. So that was so awesome. Awesome, yeah. Oh, really. uh, that, that is true. That, that's not immediate. That's answer to prayer. So the Lord will provide the way. The, the Lord will make the means, you know. And um, that, that So is all true. you need to do is hear from God that, that you're to go. Yeah. And once you get the green light from God, everything else will be provided. Right. Jehovah Jireh, yes. he is the God who provides. Yeah. And as you step out into the water, yeah. he parts yeah. the water. Amen. <laughs> That's Amen. how he works. Amen. That's how he rolls. That's, That's how, how he Lord. rolls. That's our Lord. So, um, amen. That, that's an encouragement right there. If you're not encouraged already, I was encouraged because I was like, right on. And we prayed for you too, sis, for your time off. We were like, okay, Lord. So, you know, that's what we do. We pray and we ask the Lord and God God, God provides, you know. So, um, the other thing that I wanted to encourage us in is uh, shortly in the Word. I wanted to look at, at this because uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse um, uh, 8, it says... And uh, all the way to 10 it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So this is, this is our Lord. He says, You've been saved by grace, church. And uh, I got this cool little, um, you know, thing on, on Facebook, and it was this, this guy outside of a church. The church is packed. There's all these people in this church, and this, it's all in Spanish, so I had to, had to read it in, in Espanol, which is cool. <laughs> so the guy's outside with a sign, and he's saying, Get out, Christians! Get out, Christians! Get out, Christians! And all this, this church is packed, you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah. So each Bible study, each night of, of church, this guy was out there. Get out, Christians! Get out, Christians! You're like, what's this guy? So somebody thought, I'm going to go up to him and say, what's going on, man? So he goes up to him and says, hey, what's going on? You know, um, these Christians are, are, are good people. You know? They, 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 all they want to do is help and bless. He goes, well, yeah. But they're all in there. <laughs> I, mean, I want them to get out to tell us more about this God. 
We want to know more. There's people that want to know more. And they're holding up signs even saying, get out, Christians. Get out. And the Lord is telling us, we got to get out. we got to be about the Lord's business. If we're living in perilous times, <coughs> then what manner of life ought we, uh, ought we to live? You know? You know, um, one thing that uh, it, it, it blesses me in Timothy chapter 2. Timothy chapter 2. Uh, 2 Timothy. Oh, I'm in 1 Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why them look right. That's wrong now. Verse 1 through 4, it says, You therefore, my son, be strong in grace that it that is in Christ, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to, to teach, the, teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So we're in this warfare. I don't know if you've noticed, but the world around us, whether it's in Mexico or whether it's here in the U.S., it's pretty perilous, you know? I think it's dangerous, it's more dangerous here in the U.S. right now than it is in Mexico. So if the Lord's calling you to Mexico, don't be afraid. <laughs> God will take you there, and he'll bless you and be there with you. And he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But we as good soldiers of Jesus Christ can't get entangled in this, in these affairs. So who are we looking to? God, I'm looking to you. What, do you, what would you have me do? So we could spend our time going to games. We could spend our time, you know, working on our homes, which is a, a blessing. Praise God for all those things. We can spend our time building up our wealth. We could spend our time on, on a lot of things. But what has God called you to do? What has God called me to do? We need to be entangled in God's affairs. God, what do you want me to do? Lord, I want to hear, Lord, the church family is knocking, and they're like, with prayer, asking, so Lord, I want, to, I want to ask you, Lord, what would you have me do? Now, if it's not getting out of the church and going out to Alamos, well, that's okay. Get out and tell somebody about Jesus. There's people that are holding signs, asking, I need to know about God. Help me. And uh, we experienced that even before we went. People were coming to the Lord. Because they want to, they're hungry. They they need to know. They they need to hear comfort. They need to hear the Lord. They need to hear God's word. And uh, that's a sweet blessing that we can have that honor of saying, "I can show you to Jesus. Come along. Let me take you there. Let me introduce you to my Savior, who will be your Savior if you just give your life to Him." Amen. 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 So that that was a cool picture that I saw. This little character. Get out, Christians! Get out, Christians! <laughs> but, hey, look, the Lord has supplied us His Word. We have His whole counsel. And uh, we have great teachers here that the Lord's gifted in areas of, 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 of hearing God's Word. And you guys have heard God's Word. Now it's time for us to allow that Word to get out. It, there has to be something in us that says, Okay, I read this verse today. And this is what it told me to do. What would you have me do with this verse today, Lord? Oh, man, we can read through the Bible every year. And that, praise God, amen. Read through the Bible in the year and ask God every day, what would you have me do today? In my workplace, out when I'm at the bank, whether I'm going on a big, you know, week-long, that's short-term <laughs> missions. I want to just inform you that, too. A week-long mission is short-term. Right. And it's very short because short when you're there, you're almost thinking, we already got to go. No, we don't want to go yet. You know? But we can't wait to get back to our church family too because we know that this is where we're going to have fellowship too. But we got to get out. We got to get out, Christians. And we got to get this message of Jesus Christ, the gospel that has the power to save people. Look, it had the power to save me out of where I was. It had the power to save you out of whatever you were in. 
Didn't it? Mm. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Doesn't it have the power to save anybody? Yes. Yes. Then, then, Lord, help us. Gift us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to be able to call people to Jesus. Mm. Just like the disciples did, right? When they were being called, hey, i got to tell you about this. About Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the prayer of Calvary Chapel Life. That we would look to God's Word. It's sweet to hear it on Sunday morning. It's sweet to hear it on Wednesday night. But it's sweet, even more sweeter to do it. Because when we're able to do God's Word, we fulfill the Word. It will not return void. And God's going to accomplish what He's intended to do. Amen? Amen. 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 That's the encouragement for tonight. The Lord loves you. He wants to use you in whatever area you want to be used. This is a great place to be used. Uh, you know, the Lord's given us an open door for missions. Continue to pray. And uh, the Lord's given you an open door to, to serve Him. Here. See what needs to be done. If there's a table, here. We would say the same thing. Then pick up the other side. And if there's an area that's lacking, hey, I, I see that, you know, you guys may need help here. Can I help? You sure can. Come alongside. We'll help you. We'll train you. And that's what the Lord would have us to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this evening. Lord, thank you for the testimonies, Father, of the